five, four, three, two, one. Hey, shiny crafty people, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim Totten, and today uh, we are counting down the top 10 uh, tools that are essential in mass making. And in fact, if you've watched my other videos, you may have already seen quite a few of these, but I'm going to bring you some other examples and maybe show you some things that I haven't exactly showed you before. So join us right here to see what is necessary. This is normally where I tell you to come down to the cutting table, but we don't need to do that. So I'll just pop it out and I'll start with what I think is uh, what you actually need at the beginning, which is some kind of inspiration for what you're going to make. So number 10 is you're going to need videos and tutorials and other uh, other ways to see what kind of master out there and what you want to make. And I tell you, I get so much inspiration watching other YouTubers on on uh, this platform show off really cool stuff. But I also read blog posts and I look at uh, different resources from various organizations. Like the very first mask I made was the Deaconess mask, you know, which is a, a rectangle that's folded with the the pleats in it. And uh, it's still one of the most comfortable masks that I wear. In fact, the most comfortable masks I wear are by uh, Ryan at mastsbyryan.com. And they're basically a Deaconess pattern, a rectangle. So you need that. Uh, you need your inspiration. What are you going to work on? And then, of course, uh, number t uh, number nine is going to be you need some way to create that into a pattern you can use. So in fact, you can... Um, the easiest way would be to draw it out with a, a simple... If it's, you're doing the Deaconess pattern, you just need a rectangle. Or if you do something more... Yeah, more uh, um, involved, you might need to print a pattern off of the internet. This is our Batwing uh, template, and you can print it as paper and cut it out. It has all three of the sizes here. And in fact, you can get the, the small and the large out of one piece of paper, and you would just need to print another one for the medium. So then this would work so that you could actually use it. Or you might decide that you want to um, glue that onto some like harder stock. This is um. This is chipboard to give you something you can mark around. Or if you want something you can cut with a rotary cutter, you can get one of these plastic, like uh, um, this is like a report folder, and uh, you could use that to, to trace out your pattern. Or use something even thicker, like um, this is a thicker material. This is actually like a cutting board material, but you could use that. And that would be really helpful as well. Now, you could, of course, to get a template or something, you could really love what you're doing and want to have it made out of acrylic. So this is actually a template for our 3D mask template. And this is made out of quarter inch um, cast acrylic and our laser cuts those out. You can order them for my company, Artisan Laser Guild, or you can find some in your own community and have them cut them out for you uh, from available templates. And of course they come in, you know, many different arrangements. There's a, a custom one we made for somebody that they trace around. And of course we have all kinds of other ones. Now, if you're not going to cut this out with a rotary cutter, you're going to need to, you know, figure out how to mark this down. And uh, number eight is you need something to mark with. Now, that could just be a standard pen, right? Uh, you can go to a Sharpie if you're not worried about how thin the line is. Or you can do what I like to do, which is use a, a chalk pencil. So this is a, a chalk pencil you can use. And you'll notice this one comes with a cute little eraser. Brush it off at the end when you're done. And uh, and it comes in different kinds of those. Actually, I think my favorite is this version of a chalk pencil that is um, sort of like a, a drafting pencil. You can add different pieces of chalk into it. And there'll be a link in the description of where you can buy this particular one. I think we got them at um, Joanne Fabrics, but it could be other places. And then it, it comes with a little sharpener so that you can then um, easily... Oh, let me put it here. I gotta get a little more sticking out. If you want a really sharp edge, you can sharpen that. Yeah, really nice. That was, uh, so number eight is something to mark with and uh, you start to get a point. Now, so you've got your pattern, you've marked it on and now you've gotta figure out what you're doing uh, to actually cut it out. So you need cutting implements and that's number seven as we're counting down. Number seven is something to cut with. And I gotta tell you, I really love using a rotary cutter. This is an Ulfa 45 millimeter rotary cutter. They do make it in 60. They make it in 30, I think, or 18. I can't remember the numbers. Um, so if you're going to use a rotary cutter, you will also need some type of a grid, something to use to cut next to. But you can also just use a pair of scissors once you've marked it out. Now, I'll tell you, no matter what you're doing with cutting, anything sharp, I really suggest that this is sort of like 7A or 7B. Is you have one of these metal cutting gloves. And this has some grippies on it. So if you put it on your hand... It'll give you some grippers. Oh, gotta put the right fingers. 
and that'll let you hold down or careful when you're cutting. You do need one on the other hand too. So I would suggest if you're right-handed that you actually want to wear the glove on your left hand. Um, this one only has grippers on the inside, so I have to put it the wrong direction. But it is woven out of a material that is um, less likely to be cut through. It has like metal threads uh, in here. And I have to tell you, I have cut myself so many times with one of these. No, nothing ever so serious that I had to go to the hospital or anything. Uh, I did put an X-Acto knife into my hand uh, working at a print shop once, and it went in so beautifully clean. In fact, it's probably going to be hard to see. I have a... right there. See that? I put the X-Acto knife in so beautifully by putting my hand down as I was holding an X-Acto knife, and it turned, and it came out, and I thought, oh, I didn't really stab myself, and then it just started pouring blood. It was such a clean cut and these will cut you clean so you have to be really careful um, a brand new sharp one is pretty sharp wear the glove um, if you're at all concerned and i think even if you're not concerned if you're getting cocky <laughs> wear the glove those are our cutting implements of course you can use little tiny scissors two things to trim you'll always need that sort of thing uh, number six is going to be something to hold your fabrics together so you know you're, you're you're piecing together a mask and and of course you can use standard pins right but some people are a little concerned that these pins will put holes through the fabric. Um, and so instead you can get these, what some people call wonder clips. You see that cute little clip? And that can hold your fabrics together. In fact, I really like these a lot. I buy them from a company called Madame So. Madame So. And I'll tell you, um, they're not, uh, they don't sponsor this video. So I mean, it would be nice if they did, if they wanted to send me some free stuff, you know. Uh, but they're so fantastic. And you can buy them lots of places. And then you just clip those on to clip your fabrics together. And, and it means you're not going to be sewing over your pins the way that I sometimes do. Number five is that you're going to need a sewing machine, right? You're going to need something to sew this whole thing together. Uh, or you can hand stitch, of course, but this is going to be a lot faster. Now, you could use a serger for a lot of the type of straight line sewing as well. I use a Janome 1600P or a Singer S16. They're basically the same machine. They've, basically, they've been cloned, made in the same factory. They're, they're also made in the same factory with the, um, with um, I believe, with Husqvarna's uh, with the Husqvarna Viking um, quilter QC, because uh, they're like almost the exact same machines, or at least they were a couple of years ago. Uh, this machine is amazing. The 1600P is a little different than the 1600DBX, which uses a different needle. This uses a standard needle that you would use on almost any other sewing machine, and it has a couple of features I really love. I'm going to do a full video one day that shows all of the features, but it's got needle up and needle down position. It has an automatic thread cutter button over here, the reverse, and it's got a larger throat area. So if I'm doing big projects like quilting something, um, it is a straight stitch machine though. So you're not going to get any zigzag stitches or any decorative stitches out of this machine, but it is all metal and like, well, mostly there's a little bit of, there's, um, well, there's a little bit of plastic on tiny parts, but almost all of it is metal. And I really like that. It also means it's really heavy. So it's nice to have it sunk down into a table like this. All right, number four, I have to remember what we're at. It's gonna be, uh, once you've sewn it together, you a lot of times you need to turn things inside out, point out corners, and you're gonna need some type of a bodkin. Um, I use this, um, this stiletto sometimes from Fawns and Porter. Now this is not necessarily meant to turn the corners out on fabric, but I like it for that because I'm gentle. If you're not gonna be as gentle, you want something to turn with. And this is a plastic version of a bone turner. This lets you get into the corners and push out. So it's not real sharp at the end here. And of course it has some other nice curves. So if you're trying to not, to just be really careful pushing out, you could also, if you're gonna be careful, use chopsticks. These are chopsticks I got last time I ate Thai food at Aloy D, which is a great restaurant in my area. Um, but you also can use, these are from the purple thing. They're not purple, but one of my viewers, thank you so much, sent these to me. And they have a little pointy end here that's not super pointy. And then a flat end at the other end. And then they also have a hole through here, which I'll show you how to use in just a minute. All right, that is a, a bodkin, something to turn it with. Uh, you're also gonna need to be able to press things with an iron. And so I have this really great little home ever. Oh, look at this team. So good, my, no, I can't see on my glasses. This is a really cute small um, iron that you can press with and it comes with this little piece so you can actually sit it. You don't have to tip this iron up on end. In fact, it, it won't really sit this way. It really does need to lay this way and it works really well for that. And I actually, I love to use this on right on my sewing station with a wool mat. 
that I also bought from Madam So. This really nice wool mat, so um, it's really thick and you can literally iron right over top of it. It's so good. So you're gonna need something to press with. I, I also use a Sunbeam iron regularly. People always ask me where I got that. It was a uh, full price $29.99 at uh, Target, the big Sunbeam iron that I use sometimes. And in fact, in an upcoming video, when we get hit a certain number of subscribers, I'll be giving one of those away uh, in a contest. So stay tuned for that. Number two. Uh, is, and there's no real reason of what order I put these in. So one's not better than number 10. Like it's not like one is better than the other one, but we're counting down. So number two is you're gonna need something to thread elastic with. In fact, that's a really good use of this part of the, the purple thing is that let's say we have some elastic here, right? And we need to thread it through a casing. I can put that through, right? through here, and then use this to thread this through a casing. See, pull it, you can tie it on or pull it through a casing. Really nice. Now let's say you don't have that. You could use, I have to get it off the table. You could use a safety pin and just safety pin through the elastic and close it and then feed that through a casing. I mean, every time I, I made, um, back when I was in college, I was uh, super poor because I was in college on a scholarship and uh, and I um, I decided to use the sewing skills that my grandmother's had taught me from being a teenager uh, when I wanted a Star Trek costume. That's a whole another video that I that I've already shared. And I I didn't know what to get people all my friends for Christmas because I didn't have any money. But I did have some fabric my grandmother had given me, and I had a sewing machine. And so everyone that year got uh, homemade uh, sleeping shorts. You know, and it was great because I actually gave all of my friends shorts. And in fact, one of my friends, um, I'm 45, so I haven't been in college in a long time. One of my dear friends told me about five years ago, we were at 20 years out of college. He said to me, um, I finally had to retire those shorts you gave me. And I had no idea what he was talking about. And he said, remember, in our first year in college in 1994, you gave me a pair of gator shorts that you made. We went to the University of Florida and, and I have worn them for bed almost every single night for 20 years. I can't imagine how threadbare they were at the end of that because I didn't use the most amazing fabric. And in fact, he told me that one of the reasons why he had to stop wearing them is that his wife said they weren't really covering much anymore um, because like all of us, he'd you know added a few pounds, but also the material was so washed and threadbare that um, she said they were a little more risque than he needed to wear for sleep shorts. And so uh, I, I need to make him some more. You know, I haven't done that. I need to go make him some other ones and, and uh, get him some shorts back again. But, but I literally used, at the time, I literally uh, threaded every single one of the elastics for those shorts with a bigger safety pin than this, but then but with a safety pin. You also could use... Um, you could also could use, a, this, is, <laughs> this is a large paper clip that I have opened up and used, and that could be used to thread through. But this is also really helpful if you get some of those ear pieces, those um, pieces to go on to the elastic, because I like to give masks that have adjustable elastics. So also at number two is that idea of using something to feed through. But you know, if you're lucky, the versions that you buy and the versions that I, I encourage people to buy, link in the description, of course, is they, they give you this little like uh, bobby pin. They call it a bobby pin. I guess it's for hair. I really have no idea what this is. Uh, but you would uh, put the elastic on it and then you can feed it through to pull the elastic through. And finally, number one, the most important thing you're going to need when you are making masks, most important tool is your own brain. All right, because you actually have a great imagination. You, all of the stuff that I see and, and bring out to, on this channel is stuff that I've gotten inspiration from somewhere else. I've seen an idea and I thought, oh, I wonder if I can make a version that is different. And in fact, a lot of times when you watch these videos on my channel, uh, you might be seeing the third or fourth iteration of a mask design, something that I've tried a couple times and didn't quite work. It'd be great if I could make these videos and just pop one off without ever having to test it or do anything and just throw it out there to you. But that doesn't work. Sometimes I make a mask that isn't so fantastic and I have to try again and try again and try again. That even goes for the ones that I've already watched other people make and I'm just showing you a different tutorial of it. So use your brain, your own imagination. If you think, man, wow, I wonder if I could turn this mask into a, a single elastic mask so I don't have to have uh, those 
ear loops I wanted to go around the back of my head. Well, I've tried that. Some of them work, some of them don't. Give it a go. Oh, what if you think to yourself, I wonder if this mask could use a, a non-woven layer in between the two uh, top layers. Well, you probably can do it. You could probably add a pocket as well. So use your brain, use your imagination, and try out different ideas for masks and for making masks. Those are your top 10 essential tools that you need to make masks. And hey, like, subscribe, comment down below of your ideas of tools that you use. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now.